real answer is here's how to find out where he's been. How long? That's going to take a little longer if I start I from the home page versus I'm already having a car in the Okay. Living in. Living in. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Crutchfield Live. I am your host, JR, joined in studio by our first guest today, Dave Delamere. How you doing, Dave? Good. How are you? Fantastic. Uh, we've got a big show for you today. We've got three huge topics we want to talk about, uh, and, uh, and Dave's going to be our guest for one of them. And uh, as always, when we're live here, we have the opportunity to answer your questions, to interact with you. We would love to hear from you, whatever's on your mind, Crutchfield related. Uh, we, we would love to answer questions about uh, just about anything we sell. So uh, there's already one comment in the chat already. It's not a question, it's just more of a shout out or a MJ Bird said, I need to watch this and see what they talk about. He's, Welcome, Jaybird. He, he's right. Yeah, he, he is 100% right. Yeah. right. Hopefully he's watching now. Thanks for, uh, thanks for watching him, Jaybird. Uh, also, we, uh, we do community posts on YouTube, and uh, we actually have a comment there. Um, and uh, there's going to be a question. We're going to answer. You're going to help me answer this question okay, a little you bit. You got it. Yeah. Um, I also want to tell you, if you're, if you're live with us, you can chat with us here on Facebook, on YouTube. Uh, you can post your questions in the comments there. Uh, and if you're not watching live, if you're watching this later, you can still post your questions there. We have people that look at that stuff all the time, uh, and we'll get back to you as quickly as possible. Uh, through, you know, even if it's a week from now, we can still answer those questions in the comments. So, okay. yeah. Uh, so, uh, before we get into our topics, let's answer this question. It came in yesterday when we posted on YouTube that we were going to be going live today. Uh, YouTube uh, user The Willy uh, said, trying to find out what stereo units support a climate controls for vehicles that have controls on the screen of the radio. How do I know what stereos can be put into my car? That's a good question. 
It's a common question yeah. now, right? I mean, yeah. you, you were seeing this a lot in car audio. You write about a lot of car audio products. I, I do indeed, yeah. We get that question. Uh, as an advisor, I started to get a little bit of it when I was uh, going into my copyright position. So I fielded a few of those questions sometimes, and now it's becoming much more prevalent, especially with hybrid electric vehicles, sure. things like that. It went from you had you, you had one or two of those calls a week as mm -hmm. an advisor to now it's a couple a day. Yeah. Uh, and because so many cars have integrated so many of the car's systems. Right. The air conditioning and heating control, there's gauges that can appear on the radio, your tire pressure's there. All of that communicates with the vehicle's computers, right? Mm -hmm. Not just computer, computers. Right. Uh, there's a whole CAN bus system for all of that stuff communicating, and your radio is a part of that. Your factory radio is a part of that now. And uh, if you want to replace your radio, your new radio kind of should be a part of that too. Absolutely. And that's really the answer to your question, Willie, is that, yeah, that is possible. Uh, you can definitely put radios in cars that will be integrate with the vehicle systems and allow you to see and control that stuff on the screen. All of that varies from car to car and from radio to radio, and there's a special magical device that makes this happen. And I'm gonna show you now, uh, if you guys wanna pull this up on my computer. Uh, I've got a uh, Crutchfield website up. I have gone ahead and entered a vehicle, uh, a fairly modern vehicle. This is a 2017 Ford Escape, right? So you can now see what I've got here. I've entered that into the website. And uh, by the way, this is a cool page on Crutchfield uh, because you can see pictures of the car that we researched when we got our, our uh, research team in the install bay. We actually took, you know, we took this car apart and took pictures and there they are for you. Uh, so there's lots of really cool information here. You can see how other people have upgraded their escape. But really what I wanna show you is down here, you can use this to go look at car stereos that we know will work with your car. And uh, the, uh, the way it works is if I go to the list of all car stereos and scroll down and start to look at these filters on the left. Mm -hmm. Now, you might not know what to look for if you, if you don't have somebody like me or one of our advisors or Dave tell you what to look for. But that's me answering your question, Willie, is if you find radios that have a special connector on the back of them for a OEM integration adapter that makes all that work. Uh, and that adapter is made by a company called iDatalink. Uh, so I'm gonna click on this uh, filter right here that says iDatalink port. And that tells me that all the radios on this list will have a special connector on the back. Mm -hmm. They will work with a special OEM integration adapter, which is basically a black box with a computer in it that makes the computer in your new radio talk to all the computers in your car. That's, what, that's how it does that. So now we're only looking at 20 or 30 radios. They all have that connector. And, uh, and now you can use the iDatalink. Pro it progr you program it to your car, to your radio, right. and it makes all of that happen. So the, uh, the real answer here is there's a bunch of radios that will do it. Uh, many different brands of radios will get it done, uh, but you can't really do it without that special adapter. And when you put your car into the website like that and you choose one of those radios, our website will show you that adapter and it will put it all together as a package of stuff you can buy to make your installation work the way you want it to. I'm part of the crew that helps maintain that vehicle selector on our site. So if you have suggestions on what you'd like to see, other filters that you'd like to know about, please let us know in the comments field. We'd be glad to take those into consideration. And I think on the iDatalink filter you pulled up, there's a little information icon. And if you hover over that, it'll tell you more about the feature you are filtering. Yeah. So you'll know more about it. I mean, and it's not much to look at, right? It's just a box with wires. Nope. It lives inside your dash. Yep. That's where the magic happens on that. There, I'll see if we can show that, uh, what you just mentioned there. Uh, let's see, iDatalink port hovering over the little information bubble, uh, and that sort of explains a receiver with this port works with the iDataLink MRR or MRR2. RR for radio replacement module. Mm -hmm. Cool so, piece, got yeah. one in my car. Uh, see this radio right here? I just happened upon it. And if you've been watching our previous Crutchfield Lives, you've seen the, Crutch, the, uh, the Sony Mobile ES radio. Uh, the fancy 9500. You've demoed it, right? I have demoed it, yep, indeed. It's a pretty cool radio. Yeah, you know a little bit more about something that's happening with that radio? It's gonna go in my car! Oh, I'm so excited! Right. It's gonna go in my car. We're planning out the install now. I'm gonna, I'm actually going to use one of those iDatalink Maestro adapters to make it work with my car. 
uh, and then I'm going to use it with all the amps and speakers that I've already previously installed. So uh, we're not installing this tomorrow or anything, but it will be happening in the in the near future. Mm -hmm. Are you, you going to write an article and put it in the website and the catalog and all that too? Very possible that's going to happen, yeah. Cool. I'd say more than likely. Awesome. I mean, the car was already written up once, so it, we should show everybody the next but phase. But it's you, JR. For you, Aww. you get to. I'm, I'm so humbled. <laughs> uh, so, we're going there. We've already got people watching and commenting from Facebook. Gene says, do you have any suggestions for the new Ford Maverick for speakers or head units? Uh, now, when you say new Ford Maverick, I assume you mean like new, new. Like, a, is that a 2022? Because 22, yeah. they, they used to make Mavericks back in the day, Way and back. now it's coming back. Yeah. Is that true? Uh, I think it's a totally different vehicle, too. How long have they been doing the Maverick? I'm checking on my you know, internal database. Uh, yeah, 2022 is what it shows up as. They made Mavericks in the 70s, and now again, they're bringing the Maverick back. We do not have research on it yet. So we do not know what speakers fit, what the what it's like to replace the radio. You'll probably need one of those iData links uh, if you're gonna do it at all. So not yet, Gene. We can't really make recommendations without getting our research team in the car. So as soon as we do, we'll have that info. Dave will write about it, uh, and we'll be able to educate you and help you get the sound you want in there, but not yet. Eduardo says, hi. Blaze asks, what do you all think about the JL Audio subwoofer? Have y'all ever put a subwoofer in a Tesla? <laughs> Yet another... That's a tricky. Yeah. yeah. We've actually talked about this on a previous Crutchfield Live as well, electric vehicles. Uh, we had Chris, one of our tech team leaders and trainers, join us to talk about some of the issues. Yes. With electric vehicles. Uh, are you dealing with this? Uh, with uh, Are you getting questions about this? We're getting some comments to the Learn articles, definitely. Uh, it's tough to recommend anything wholeheartedly because of the unknown voltages that are involved because the uh, electronic systems are so sensitive in electric vehicles that we don't want to have a lot of draw, current draw on them for subs and things like that until we're absolutely sure it's not going to do something detrimental yeah. to the car. Uh, and basically where we landed was we are continuing to educate ourselves as a company uh, to do research and to find out what is the deal with electric vehicles, their electrical systems, what can they handle mm -hmm. as far as uh, current draw from amplifiers and things like that. Uh, and so we, uh, as we learn more, we'll be able to help you install more stuff into your electric cars. Because just because you drive a Tesla doesn't mean you should have a horrible stereo system, right? No. Definitely not. You should have awesome music in there as well. So uh, so thanks for the question, Blaze. And as far as JL Audio subwoofers go, yeah, heck yeah, those things are heck awesome. Yeah. Joe says, ported or sealed box? Have you ever had that question before? Oh, maybe once or twice, yeah. Uh, depends, and this isn't avoiding your question. This is, depends on what type of music you want, to be honest with you. Sealed boxes are going to give you a little more accurate response, a little more punchy bass. Ported's going to be more airflow, thus it's going to be more boomy, more sustained for you. So. If that's what you're looking for in terms of the type of music you're listening to, then you'll lean towards ported in that case. Cool. I am trying to f make my toolbar go away so my computer looks more awesome. I thought it was auto doing that, but it's not apparently. So, uh, right, uh, we got more questions. We've got TJ on YouTube says, hi, from Chicago here. Tony here doing long time, uh, uh, Tony here, long time customer love, uh, I can't read, apparently. That's okay. Thank I'm you, I'm going to start over. Thanks for Tony. your patience, Tony. Appreciate it. Hi, from Chicago here. Tony here, longtime customer. Love my Infinity Base Link Mini for our 2021 Accord Sport. Mm. Base Link Mini, that's an Infinity-powered subwoofer. It's not huge, uh, but makes classic. makes more bass than it, sh ever, than it seems like it possibly should. Exactly. Like you would not expect what comes out of that thing to come out of it. We've been selling Base Links since, uh, I mean, what, 20 years? Gotta Twenty be. More than 20 that, maybe? Years. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, love to hear that they are uh, doing what you want for, for bass. Uh, MJ Bird, how do I know if towers or bookshelf speakers are right or better for your setup? We are getting some good questions today. I know. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's like they knew what we were going to talk about yeah, today. Yeah, really. It's um, weird. We're actually going to be talking about those bookshelf speakers right there with Dave. That's why he's here. Uh, so we've been listening to some recently. But how do you know, floor standing or bookshelf? It really depends on what you are looking for, not only in sound, but also in the layout in your room, uh, what's going to work on a shelving unit, things of that nature, how you want the aesthetic to look like and sound like. You know, traditionally, I mean, uh, 
I, I want big floor standing speakers, right? Because mm-hmm. that is just I want I want massive I want imposing looking speakers. I want them to scare you a little bit. Uh, and uh, floor standing speakers are physically larger because of those bigger cabinets. You'll typically have a little bit more bass that'll go a little lower. Yep. Uh, that's one thing you can do when you have that extra cabinet space. More drivers, ported cabinets, more bass usually. Uh, so if you're going bookshelves, it's either because you don't need all that bass. Mm-hmm. Or you're going to use two bookshelves, maybe because they fit better into the decor of your room. Or, or you're going to use a subwoofer to accentuate the low frequencies. That's a big one. Yeah. So yeah, a 2.1 system is like a pair of bookshelves and a sub. Mm-hmm. That's a great. That's a great alternative, and might look a little more elegant than a big, you know, scary pair of floor speakers. Sure, because you can basically put that subwoofer anywhere in the room and still have it do its thing extremely it, well. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Robert. Roberto Musitano says, hello from Australia. Hello. Uh, love your channel. Thank you so much, for uh, Roberto, for, uh, for hanging out with us all the way. Thank you very uh, much. Along the, on the other side of the world. Uh, let's see here. I've got all these pop-ups. I can't see my notes. There we go. More questions coming in. Gene asks, uh, do you need one? To test. Oh, he wants to bring his Maverick in so we can actually do our product research I on it. I almost was going to say, if you want to drive <laughs> it on in the research garage, we probably would like that very much. Yeah, you know, we've been known to do that from yeah. time to time, uh, Gene. So uh, it, it can happen. Are you near Virginia? Because you're going to have to get it here. We're not coming to you. <laughs> uh, we don't do road trip vehicle research tests. But uh, yeah. if you're not too far away and you want to drive in, we might take you up on that, especially to get a car that clearly there's some buzz about it. So uh, yeah. if that's the case, uh, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say if you want to d- uh, direct message us somehow, uh, we can put you in touch with the right people here at Crutchfield. Uh, and what'll, the way that usually works is we'll give them your number. So when they have a break in their vehicle research schedule, they might be able to reach out and uh, coordinate something with you. Mm-hmm. No promises. No promises. They are extremely busy researching cars. Oh, yeah. yeah so, car after car after car. Yep. Brian says, I wish they sold cars with an optional radio. They often do. Yeah. Some of the, like cheap cars, fleet yep. vehicles, yep. right? Usually uh, called radio delete sometimes. Yeah. Uh, Scott says, 2022 Bronco speakers. Stocks are small, and that sound bar blocks your vision through the rear. Anything vehicle-specific in the works for us audiophiles? Uh, I wonder if our vehicle research team has gotten into the new Broncos. Do you happen to know? I'm going to look it up and see. I don't see. know. So let's see. These would be 2022. I have heard Ford. rumors of an employee getting ready to buy a new Bronco. Ooh, really? I can't share anything else. I foresee that when we see a Bronco in the parking lot, we're going to grab them yeah. on a Thursday at 4 o'clock and bring them in here to talk to them live. And, and while they're in here, we're going to be out there filming their car. Right? Like what do you plan. think? Yeah. I think, I think what I just described is a crime, but... No. No, no, no. <laughs> Not with their permission. Uh, <laughs> so it looks like... Some of the Broncos we've got in here, uh, as far as research goes, some of them say partial. So uh, it depends on the exact model of Bronco uh, that you have, uh, whether or not we have research. Your best bet, uh, which is, who was that? Was that Scott? Yeah, Scott, uh, your best bet to get help on the Bronco is to call in and talk to one of our advisors. They can look your vehicle up, and if it's one of the ones we have already researched, they can probably help you figure out some speakers and such. So... Uh, yeah, I'm sure we're going to start to get a lot. Of, I've been seeing a lot of those new Broncos on the road. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, we've got to get research. I think, do the guys at the research garage have priority on types of vehicle? Uh, yeah, our vehicle research team keeps tabs on, tabs on, like, the vehicles that customers enter into our website. So mm-hmm. we know what vehicles people want. People, people are coming to Crutchfield and want to buy speakers and radios and amps and subs. What, spe- what vehicles do they have? Because we, they search for them. And so we know that. That helps us prioritize which vehicles we need to get researched and when. Awesome. That sounds like a great plan. Yeah, that's part of the deal. So, Oh, my God. I haven't even told anybody what we're talking about today. And uh, yeah, I know. This is fantastic. You yeah. guys are awesome. Keep the questions coming. Absolutely love it. Gene is in North Carolina and says he will make the drive with his Ford Maverick. So are we getting in touch with Gene yeah, on the side? To, all right. Fantastic. Uh, that is awesome. Uh, Blaze asks, what sub should I upgrade to after the JL Audio to get more of a hit? Uh, we're going to need more specifics on that, and I probably would suggest talking to one of our advisors because they, they are trained to ask you all about what you have now, why do you want to replace it, what would make sense as a replacement, what is the next step in your audio journey. Uh, but uh, Oof, if, Just it, had a flashback. I know, right? <laughs> 
It's like you're on the phone. I know, again. right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, there's a, uh, we can definitely help you with that, uh, Gene, I'm sorry, not Gene, that was Blaze. If you, if you want to throw in more detailed information in the chat, we might be able to come up with something for you as well. All right. What we actually plan to talk about, which by the way, we are happy to interrupt and answer questions at any point. Definitely. Uh, but Dave is here to talk about demo days. We've uh, recently set up these three speakers in our vendor training room and, uh, and we got people to listen to them and you're here to talk about that experience. Mm -hmm. We're also going to talk about Speaker Compare. Uh, it's a feature on our website that allows you to listen to different speakers and compare them to, in, to each other. And hopefully that helps you pick out speakers. We're going to talk about how that works, how you can use it, uh, as well as uh, we're going to actually bring in uh, one of our guys that does that. He, cre he helped it. create yep. the whole thing. Uh, so he's an incredibly smart person, and we're going to pick his brain a little bit. Awesome. Uh, and then last but not least, we're going to talk about Morel car speakers. Uh, Morel is one of those car speaker companies that not a lot of people have heard of. You right. know, they're not like a household name or anything like that. But man, are they making some good speakers. We're going to bring in Matt, uh, and he's going to actually talk about them. He's had some experience with them. We just did a video on them. So those are the main topics in today's Crutchfield Live. Uh, I do want to throw out a poll question. And uh, so those of you watching, hopefully you can throw us uh, this. We'll come back to the answer to this poll question when it's time to talk to Matt about the Morel car speakers. The question is, uh, uh, oh, and by the way, this, quest this poll will go up on YouTube. Uh, you'll be able to select an answer and it's neat. On Facebook, just put your answers in the comments uh, and we will tally those in as well. Uh, the poll question, what speakers do you have in your car? Uh, your four choices are the stock speakers, base system, you know, the cheap, basic oh, yeah. factory st or stereo speakers. Or did you get a car with a stock system that's like a premium upgrade uh, of an amplifier, name brand speakers, that sort of thing? Or have you already made the jump to aftermarket speakers, but you just kind of went budget friendly? Or did you go all the way to some really nice high-end premium aftermarket speakers? So four flavors of answer. We're just curious uh, what you guys have in your cars, and, uh, and we'd love to know more about that. So go ahead and answer the poll question, and we will uh, come back to that later in the show. I think we got a little taste of it there in the comments already, right? Yeah, indeed we did. Uh, so it looks like we're good to go with Gene. He's going to be bringing his car. Well, we're going to give his information to product or vehicle research, right? And we're going to get him squared away. <clears throat> uh, and I've just been told the Facebook poll might be live and working as well. So if you can, if you see the poll, answer the question there, and that would be awesome. Uh, all right, you're here. Let's I'm do here. it. Let's talk about demo days. Cool. Uh, first off, uh, we've talked about them before on live, but we have. just remind everybody, what is demo days? That's a name for something we do here at Crutchfield. What is it? It's an opportunity to get products that we carry in front of our advisors, be it sales or be it tech, so they have some hands-on experience with the things we carry. And when you get that experience, it's much more, um, it's, you get more, more confidence in talking about it when you're conveying it to a customer. And you can speak to it as if you have had it set up in your own room, so to speak. So what I did with this particular demo days was three bookshelf speakers, all powered by the same Anthem multi-channel power high current amplifier. So it got some pretty good juice, about 90 watts per channel, I think, on it. Uh, and there are three home bookshelf speakers, one ELAC Carina, the other one's Bowers and Wilkins 705 S2. There they are in action right there. And the third one was the Kef R3 speakers. And I selected speakers that came from each price tier, if you will. There's about a thousand dollar difference between the three of them. Yeah. So this wasn't exactly a shootout, like which one's better. A lot of people looked at it that way, and that's fine too. But much, much of it was, I just wanted these out in front of our folks so they can get a feel for what they're all about. And what I did was I fed them uh, the same source material coming from Blue Sound, which was uh, used for Title Connect, and fed some high-res music into them. So they could easily and quickly switch between the three pairs of speakers using that soundboard you see there. And they could shut it off, shut one pair off, shut one on quickly, and get a feel for the volume, the output, the clarity, the detail that each speaker could put out. That's actually important to be able to switch speakers quickly. You don't want a gap in silence between switching yeah. from speakers A to B to C. Sure. Uh, your ears sort of reset. It's almost like a palate cleanser. And, Very uh, true. That's a great way so to put it. So you, you don't actually want a palate cleanse. You kind of want to hear the difference mm -hmm. uh, to have that contrast between the different three speakers. So uh, what did you use? What was that switching device? It's a PreSonos monitor board. I don't think it's one we ever carried, right. but uh, we got our hands on it and we're able, it's like a, a pro audio piece yeah. of gear. And I was able to hook it up to uh, three sets of RCAs feeding the amplifier. 
and just wired the speakers from there. Gotcha. Let's yeah. let's look a little closer at the three pairs of speakers you guys were actually uh, listening to in the demo days. I've got them here on my computer. Uh, they're picked. They're they're literally sitting behind us. But uh, for details, uh, this was the uh, the Kef R threes. Mm -hmm. Uh, the biggest a, of the three. They're physically yep. the largest, yep. yeah. Uh, and at seventeen hundred bucks a pair, is this the this middle? Is the middle. The middle ones, mm -hmm. right? That's right. Uh, and so that's a bookshelf speaker. Somebody asked earlier about bookshelf speakers. I can tell you, I got to listen to these surprisingly decent bass from yes. some bookshelf speakers, and I think we'll find that with all three of them. Yep. Um, that was a big surprise for uh, just about everybody listening to that demo. Was the bass on all three pairs? So uh, on this page, of course, all the information you could want about them. They use a six and a half inch woofer, uh, and it's a three-way speaker. So you can see on the front here, uh, there's a tweeter and a mid-range at the top here, and then the woofer down at the bottom. Uh, and was this a sealed or ported cabinet? Do you remember? Rear port. Rear port. So, mm -hmm. uh, oh yeah, there we go. There's... So keep in mind there that the placement proximity to the wall is important with a rear port. They do come with foam plugs too if you want to seal that up and act more like a sealed box, which we got that question earlier. But you can use them as a ported speaker and just keep in mind you don't want to keep them about nine to 10 inches away from the wall at least. Got it, and we had those next to a pair of ELAC Carinas, the BS243.4. Mm -hmm. uh, so these would be the most affordable pair Correct. in your demo day. Mm -hmm. uh, what stands out about these? Uh, the smallest of the three pairs. So if you're looking for things that fit in a certain area and you don't want them to be seen very much, although they're gorgeous, keep in mind no grills. They the don't other, come with grills, not, not an option. Grills, not an option. That's, so I mean, it's because they look great. I know. If you don't like that look though, something to keep in mind there for the aesthetic. Uh, the other thing is they have a bottom firing port, which means that they can work just about anywhere and they can work effectively in doing so. You don't have to rely on distance from uh, different spaces you're working with for some pretty solid bass response. Yeah, this is a side view of the speakers, and you can kind of see the bottom is angled with a, uh, a sort of a base plate. Right. So there's some space there for bass to escape out of that ported cabinet. Correct. So and then extend out into the room. Mm -hmm. Nice and, and real flat, even response. And the third pair. The third pair, the Bowers and Wilkins uh, 705S2s. Mm -hmm. Uh, clearly the most expensive of the Clearly three. the most expensive and clearly the front runner of preference from the listeners, to be honest with you. I was going to ask you, what yeah. was, was that, did, did you see price as a, like, clearly everybody liked these better? I mean, we weren't showing them the prices at the time, right? I, it I was gave really... them ahead of time, but it was not, like, outwardly so. Right. Yeah, if they didn't know, they hadn't looked at the sheet. But the general consensus was, yeah, those Bowers Far and away. Yeah. Yeah, the sound preference there. They just had the, as you can see with the tweeter on top of the cabinet, they are, uh, the emphasis was on the high frequencies to start, although they did the mid-range and bass response quite well. I w didn't know what to expect because of the emphasis <coughs> on the highs at first, but uh, a lot of people found them to be one of the most um, impactful in the room. And that's a big room we're dealing with in that vendor training room. So, yeah. you know, they have to cover a lot of territory. All three of these speakers did very well, but these guys just really sang to many of the advisors and listeners that checked it out. Can you explain what the heck is going on with this uh, thing on the top here? I, I know can. that's the tweeter, but why is it separated out like that? They I wanted mean, to... Uh, I know, I'm just Bowers setting you up. Thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> Bowers and Wilkins designed it that way. Uh, is that all I have to say? Or? <laughs> <laughs> no. They oh, I guess I'll explain it. <laughs> <laughs> they, they isolated the tweeter from the cabinet itself, and when I actually pulled these out of the box to set them up, I found that it had a little gift to it. And you didn't like, grab them by the tweeter and lift them not. out? Okay, good. I, did not. I follow instructions. It's not, it's not a handle. Not a handle at all. Yeah, and it makes it diff difficult to set drinks on it, but right. you, know, you can still work that. I don't recommend it. Um, I noticed that they have a little gift to them, and I looked at our instructions, and I, I thought they might have been defective or something was wrong, but in essence, they made it that way. There is a little give there because it's an isolation pad between the cabinet and the tweeter, so you don't have any resonance coming through and interfering with those frequencies, which I think now is genius, and I was the idiot that missed it. <laughs> uh, yeah, they refer to it as a decoupled carbon dome tweeter in solid body housing, so the vibrations from the cabinet and the woofer below don't color the sound of the tweeter at right. all. And to be honest, I felt very little vibrations from the cabinet. So whatever they're doing, they're well doing it right. Yeah. yeah. 
Cool. So the the demo days help people sort of see and hear three options at very different prices. Mm -hmm. And uh, and what kind of music did you play on? Like, what was your source? How, where were you getting tunes from? I was using Tidal Connect, going right to a Blue Sound Node piece, which we also carry. That was feeding into the monitor board, and so we've got some of those tracks are high res, and at least they were CD quality sound. I had uh, tracks from all over the place. I played some live from YouTube. I had. Uh, uh, Marvin Gaye going. I played some jazz with Holly Cole. So there was a, I played some classical music too, I think as well. Um, but there was a wide range and I also let advisors come in and basically pick what they wanted to hear. That was the other beautiful well, that's part. That's the beauty of, that of being, setup. if you have Tidal, uh, you have high-res streaming right. through a high-res streaming device. That's mm -hmm. the Blue Sound nodes, what I got up on the screen now. Uh, so that gets you on your internet. Uh, you control it from an iPad or an iPhone. IPad, yep. uh, you open the Tidal app, you choose whatever song you want, and it'll play it in the highest resolution available uh, because Blue Sound does that. It does that. Uh, I know when I came in the room, they started playing Sturgill Simpson, so mm. they, they knew what I wanted to hear, which was so awesome. So you coming, huh? Yeah, apparently. Uh, and the, the, so the music sounded great. This is a great way to do that demo. And what amplifier were you powering the speakers with? I know you said it was like 90 watts, but what was yeah. it? It was an older Anthem multi-channel amp we have. I think it was a PVA-8. Uh, okay. I think it was, uh, it can handle up to four pairs of speakers. Uh, and I just didn't have a fourth pair of bookshelves to show off at the time. But so we just used, I mean, it wasn't even working hard to be honest with you. And we had it cranked a few times in that room. Again, that room's huge and people wanted to try out the speakers and I encourage that, I love it. Yeah. I come in and they're cranking to something. They wanna know what these speakers can do and it was no problem, so. Um, you know, we thought we might go ahead and make it possible for you to experience what was going on in the room at Demo Days and so, uh, I was there, the video team was there, we shot a bunch of pictures, and we actually got a video of this, of the actual speakers with audio. Uh, we didn't think it was fair to you live viewers uh, to uh, hear us talk about it without sort of trying to recreate it for you at home. Of course, what you're going to be listening to is a, a really nice video microphone picking up the sounds in the rooms while we switch speakers. Uh, and then you're going to be hearing it through the internet and your headphones, your speakers. So exactly what it sounded like for us in the room is probably not what you're going to get, but you will hear clear differences yes. in the speakers. Absolutely. Uh, one of them being sort of related to how efficient each set of speakers are. You want to talk about that a little bit before sure. we play the clip? Yeah, it's a great point. The There was a lot of, I think, disappointment when the switch got triggered to the ELAC Carinas. And it, w it was kind of an unfair because there was a a volume drop as soon as you went to the Karinas. And part of that problem was the uh, sensitivity number on the Karinas, which is a measure of efficiency, was about 85 dB. The uh, KEF and the BMWs, I think, were 87 and 88. So you, a couple of digits may not mean a lot in the numbers, but in efficiency, that's pretty big gap. And uh, that contributed to the drop in output volume at the same power with the Karinas. But once we compensated for that with the old volume knob, seem to be happy. Yeah, when you, the difference is pretty stark. The B&Ws are 88 dB efficient. Mm -hmm. The, uh, was it the ELACs were 85? That's right. That's a 3 dB difference. Uh, to get the same volume out of the ELACs as you would get out of the Bowers and Wilkins, you basically need to double your power. Double the power. Uh, so that's significant, and you'll hear that in this video. Yep. Uh, we're actually working on an even bigger video where we can even sort of account for that as well, sort of an equal power, equal mm -hmm. volume thing. But in this video, you're going to hear that difference in volume. So just wanted to prime you for that. Are we ready to play that clip, everybody? Yep, cool. We're going to go ahead and roll that now. Tell you. 
So that was the actual demo that you have been describing. Uh, cam our camera's in the room, and uh, if you had any thoughts or on what you heard in there, we'd love to see it in the comments here. Um, but uh, yeah, that was what we do. And we, how often do you do demo days? Is it like a... The pandemic, of course, has affected that amongst everything else. Our ability to gather lots of people in a room yeah. is a little bit limited, yeah, right, in the interest of safety. So, sure. uh, and we and we probably, uh, ironically enough, need that more than now than ever. So sure. our advisors can actually get a chance to hear these speakers. But we do it when we can, and we mm -hmm. will do it more as uh, as you know the pandemic allows. My plan was going forward is approximately two a month, hopefully, and I feel it's a great compliment to our vendor trainings because they haven't been able to come in-house in the last exposure to the products that we carry. Yep. They used to bring things with them, and now they're talking through video conference calls, which is great. We get the knowledge we need, but we don't get the hands-on. That's what's missing. So Demo Days is kind of filling that gap. Yeah, uh, and we actually do have a way for people to listen to speakers remotely, including our advisors. Uh, we're going to be talking about that here in just a few minutes with Rick. Uh, it's something we call Speaker Compare. We're getting into that soon. Before I let you go, I, just, I want to see what the rest of these, there's been questions coming in. I've been ignoring them. I'm let's coming. I'm here. I'm back. Uh, let's see here. Richard says on YouTube, JR, I'm running Focal, Flax, and K2 components. Uh, nice. So he's, uh, he's got good taste. Yes. Uh, Two-way, no amp. What four channel would you recommend? I'm thinking Audio Control D4.800. Audio control matched up with Focal is a winning combination for I would sure. Agree with that. Just listen to that setup. That uh, I'm very jealous. Yeah, I mean, there's plenty of four channel amps that are are great. Uh, if you like audio control, I highly recommend you go with audio control. It's uh, it's great stuff. You, solid power, good control of the sound, and their owner's manuals are written by people with a sense of humor. Is that right? So, uh, no kidding. <laughs> they really are. Have fun reading the audio control owner's manuals. No joke. Uh, Elvio, can Crutchfield come up with all speaker adapters for all speakers for a Tundra with JBL? Uh, so whenever we can, we have speaker wiring harnesses. So when you replace the speakers in your car, uh, we give you those speaker harnesses when you buy the speakers from us if we have them. Mm -hmm. And we don't have them for 100% of our speakers and 100% of cars. They don't exist. So we don't make them. Uh, we work with companies like Metra and Skosh and Fer for several others that make those harnesses. And believe me, when we have enough requests for something, we definitely reach out to those companies and let them know, hey, our customers really want this. If you wanted to make one, we'd be yeah. glad to buy it from you. So uh, we don't make them. We don't have that much control, but we can let them know. So uh, And Metra and Skosh and stuff are the companies that mm -hmm. do all that. And if you use the vehicle selector and put your Tundra in, you can certainly sort through, see what fits, and when you add those to the cart, you'll then be shown any installation accessories we have. Uh, let's see, somebody else, I think this person's referring back to earlier when we were talking about the iDatalink Maestro. They say, so when I buy a touchscreen audio, I have to buy the other cables too that the site suggests, or do I plug it in with the cables already in the radio? Your first one. Uh, yes, you will need additional interfaces uh, to make this possible, to make your uh, AC controls and heating area control, all that stuff appear on the screen of your radio in your car. You'll need a special radio with that iDatalink port and the iDatalink adapter and a vehicle-specific T-harness, probably a physical mounting kit, maybe an antenna adapter, something to make the steering wheel controls work. We package all of that stuff up as a bundle of install gear, and we present it to you when you add that radio to checkout. So uh, it's all you're going to need all of that stuff. Uh, you also get a discount on it yep. when you buy when you buy your radio and the package of install gear from Crutchfield. It's Fifty bucks off uh, a package like that. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, you're going to need additional stuff. Uh, let's see. MJ Bird, you can hear the difference. Uh, oh, I think he's referring to the Demo to the Days demo. video. Sounds you like, can hear yep. the difference. Uh, Richard Fernandez says the 705, that would be the Bowers and Wilkins, right. clearly sound the best. So that came through in the video. Nice job, everybody. Yep. Uh, it actually uh, was able was translated. What we heard in the room is what people heard at home. So that's awesome. Also, is there such a thing as a sound quality kicker sub? Uh, yeah, kicker Q class. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, uh, Q Class is really their sound quality stuff. Kicker Pounds makes a ton of bass. If you want it to be slightly more refined, Kicker Q Class might be the way to go. Uh, also, maybe a sealed L7. Same person said, what about that? Yeah, yes. that will also get Absolutely. it done. A sealed L7 is uh, one of the best subs money can buy. Yep. So, uh, back to Facebook. Dave said, just installed the JBL Nano sub paired with oh, a cool. Focal amp. Cool. Uh, now I have to figure out how to tune it. Suggestions? Uh, got any suggestions? That's a good question. Uh, if you've got a CD player, maybe get some test discs. Yeah, test tones or... are available from Kicker, yeah, MTX. MTX. Several, several of our vendors have these just out there. Mm -hmm. uh, you can play them on your phone, connect your phone to your radio, Bluetooth, or a, USB a, a drive even. USB drive. Yep. Play those. Uh, that can be a critical part of tuning it to get your gain set properly, right. things like that. Uh, and of course, there's, uh, you know, cr uh, there's. Uh, very, very complex sort of DSPs you can add to it. Like if you need further tuning and tweakability, we've got devices that do that. But uh, there is a uh, how to set up your amp article, I do believe. I hope I'm not making up stuff right I now. I think you're right. I think not, there is that mine, article. But yeah. uh, Alexis, you might want to see if we can find an article on how to set up your amp. I think that exists. And if it does, can you pop that into the chat? Uh, that one came from Facebook for Dave. Scott says, uh, back to the Bronco. For us Bronco and off-road people, Kicker should build a weatherproof version of their 12-inch down-firing box with the passive radiator. I have that box in my car to my Subaru. It's facing down in the back of the Subaru. It's mm -hmm. currently covered up with a toolbox and shoes with mud on them and disc golf discs. And that subwoofer uh, is nice and tough. Everything is... TMI, Jerry. Come on. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. What's in the back of your car? You're not going to tell junk. us. Uh, the uh, the design with the flat top that you can put stuff on top of yeah so uh, those are those are fantastic subs that's what I've got in uh, in the car um, and you're thinking maybe more of a uh, durable sort of can get even muddier kind of dirtier version of that because it is like a an MDF box with carpet on it mm -hmm. um, so yeah I wouldn't want it to really be exposed to the elements too much but that's good feedback and we think kicker watches our lives so. Kicker, if you're listening, uh, a more weatherproof version of those uh, those down-firing subs with a passive radiator. And if powered properly, it may remove the mud. Yeah, yeah, it won't, mud won't last long on those woofers no. uh, with all that excursion. So, good stuff. Uh, cool. I think that's it. Did you have anything more thoughts on the demo days we need to get out there? Not that I can think of at the moment. Thanks for having me. It's uh, good to talk to everybody out there, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for being with Thank me, you. Dave. Absolutely. Appreciate Take it, care. man. You're going to stick around in case people have questions oh, for you? Yeah. yeah, I'll be Sweet. around. Sweet. Uh, next up, we are going to talk about a Crutchfield exclusive technology called Speaker Compare. Uh, and if, uh, if, you've, if you've shopped for speakers recently uh, online, you may have found that uh, you, were, you were thinking to yourself, well, how how am I going to listen to these? How am I going to know what speakers I actually uh, like and enjoy and want? And uh, we've been working on a way to make that possible. Bill had an idea years ago for uh, using some, uh, you know, magical technology inside of a computer to make uh, to make that possible, both in a retail store environment and even more importantly at home uh, from our website. And uh, it's called Speaker Compare, and it's something uh, that you can do literally live on our website right now. I'm gonna kind of show you uh, some basics of it, and we're gonna bring in Rick Wright, who is one of the guys who has uh, helped develop this and make it all work. Um, so this page here on our website uh, is, if you just search for those words, Speaker Compare, this will explain what it is. Uh, there's a video there that will show you, uh, uh, you know, the actual facility that we've built to, uh, to uh, actually make this work. And you can listen to speaker. Oh, here's the video right here. Uh, here's how it got started. There's a, lot, a ton of information about kind of what we're trying to accomplish here with Speaker Compare. Um, but what I want to sort of, I'm going to summarize for you. It makes it possible for you to listen to like three or four pairs of speakers at this, uh, in, in your headphones and to kind of hear the tonal differences from one speaker to another pair of speakers. So uh, you, know, you can hear differences in like say tweeter material uh, and how efficient a speaker is, things like that, to give you an idea of what you might prefer. 
Uh, and so that's what the system is good at. What it's not trying to do and claiming to do is uh, it doesn't sound exactly like these speakers would in your room, at your home, powered by your amplifier, or in your car, and things like that. It's not possible to do that yet. Certainly we're working on getting there, but what it can do, and it can do very effectively, is help you choose one speaker over another speaker because you like the tonal qualities of that speaker. That's kind of what we're going for here, uh, and it works. Uh, and to, we, we're pretty darn sure it works. In fact, we've done a lot of testing, we've done uh, a lot of development, and we are, uh, we're gonna talk to one of the guys that has been doing that for a number of years now. I am bringing him online. I do wanna tell you that we're pretty sure We've got the technical side of all of this figured out. He is not here in the room with me. He is uh, in another part of Virginia in a super secret lab. Uh, and uh, he uh, comes to us from there. He, if he told us where he was, uh, then we, he'd have to kill us all. Um, so, uh, so Rick, how are you today? Doing well. Thank you, thank you for joining us. Did I do an okay job of explaining what Speaker Compare is actually able to do? I think so. Yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. Good. Then we're off to a good start. Uh, <laughs> so let's find out. Uh, let's establish your street cred a little bit here, uh, Rick. Uh, before before working with Crutchfield, what did you do? How did you uh, uh, how did you learn all about sound and stuff? <clears throat> well, I did my undergrad at University of Delaware uh, and immediately started graduate school in the vibration acoustics lab at Virginia Tech, um, and I was working on my project was uh, part of a NASA program for reducing aircraft sound. So I wasn't exactly in the speaker uh, and audio realm, but you know, it's all related in the acoustics world. Um, and during my time there, uh, Bill Crutchfield started uh, a project or two that I was not directly related with, uh, with but I was aware of. Um, and soon after I graduated, uh, Bill was looking to, the, the technology had matured to a point where he was ready to bring it in-house. Uh, so Bill and I were introduced through some colleagues of mine at the lab. They were postdocs and, and uh, professors. And before too long, uh, Bill had hired me and uh, charged me with commercializing the technology. And so, and thus began your journey of figuring out, did Bill come to you basically with the current, you know, like what speaker compare, he, did he have a fully realized idea and he, and you had to sort of make it physically happen or was he still thinking about how and what it should do? It was a little of both. So the original concept was for a listening, a virtual listening room in a retail store. So we were going to have smaller retail stores and less inventory and to solve the problem of that people want to listen to actual speakers. Uh, we wondered if it was a way, there was a way to virtually demonstrate what speakers sounded like. So the original incarnation was creating a, a special listening room with uh, carefully chosen speakers and characterized, um, and then challenged by how do you make this speaker sound like that speaker? Uh, so that was, we've had a couple uh, generations of that. Uh, the first one was in 2006. The second generation was around 2013. Um, and the technology was improving as we went. Um, and a couple years after that, maybe around 2015, Bill wanted to take it to a wider audience. He said, how do we get this onto the web? And that was the genesis of Speaker Compare. So that what, brought we're, in uh, we're right now on screen, people are seeing the video we've got of you guys uh, at your lab, your, your, your sound chamber, your microphones, uh, mm -hmm. and some of our listening rooms, and you guys working at your computers. Um, can you talk a yeah. little bit about how it works. I mean, clearly you can't give away all of the secret sauce, right? Uh, it's patented technology. We're, uh, right. we're very protective of it because it's, I mean, it's, you've done a lot of work to get us to this point. Um, but generally, how does it, how do you do it? Well, we, it all starts with carefully characterizing, under, measuring and understanding uh, the performance of the speaker we're trying to simulate. Um, and we also have to characterize and understand uh, so that we can compensate for the actual equipment that we're using to do the playback. Um, so, so, we, so, 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 so in a virtual listening room, we've got speakers behind panels, right? Uh, and yeah. you've made it somehow, you figured out a way to make those speakers sound like other speakers. 
Yeah, so the first part is being able to take out the coloration of the speakers we're actually using. So we equalize and, and flatten them. Um, and then if you want to think of it, you, then we overlay the, um, the performance of the speakers we want to simulate because we've, we've often characterized those and we've stored all that information digitally. Uh, and so you put those two things together and you've, you've, you've equalized one and then overlaid the performance of the other. And the net result is this one sounds like that one. That sounds like uh, it, it would take one, a ton of computer power to do that. And two, a lot of time would have to be spent measuring the sounds of a lot of different speakers. Is that kind of a, that, is, that, that sounds like a big correct. deal. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. And our, and our methods and techniques, uh, both on the capturing and pro, you know, profiling the speakers uh, and storing the information, as well as developing the playback systems. Uh, in some ways, they were equally challenging because the, at least in the initial stores, it was done in real time, processing real time audio. Um, so that was a challenge. Uh, but the most important part is to come up with a way that when you put the whole thing together, it's a faithful representation for the, the users. You know, we were trying to bring a very faithful alternative way to demonstrate speakers uh, that wasn't biased. And how do you know speaker compare actually accomplishes the goal? Like it actually works. We've done testing for this, right? We have done testing. So uh, one of the challenges of taking it online was uh, we, well, part of it was out of our control. We, we don't know what speakers or room people were, uh, were gonna be listening in. So uh, our approach was, well, let's, let's deliver through headphones, but only the headphones that we have characterized uh, and determined have a broad enough frequency response, a dynamic uh, range, such that um, you will get a generally uh, good representation of what the speakers will sound like. As you mentioned before, uh, we can't predict exactly what your environment's gonna be. So we can't say that this is exactly what these speakers are gonna sound like when you get them home and set them up wherever you choose to put them. Um, but what we do do is control as much as we can and bring a level playing field so that you are getting a, a realistic, relative uh, tonal comparison uh, between the speakers you're listening to. So in the virtual listening rooms, we have a lot of control. You guys have a lot of control of the environment. And as a result, not only can you replicate other speakers, but you can sort of simulate different rooms, right? Different room sizes and things like that. But all of that requires people to physically come to our retail stores, uh, right. which means they've have to drive to Virginia or we've got to put retail stores everywhere else. Uh, and uh, I guess a while back, Bill said, what about uh, doing this on our website? Can we do it? And now you're talking about doing that same thing, but in headphones. And right. so and you mentioned something about uh, learning the characteristics of the headphones, like Headphones have to go on people's heads. People's ears are shaped differently. How do you account for that? Like, how does that kind of work? So headphones definitely presented a couple of new challenges. In our retail rooms, people brought their own hearing system. They walked in with their own ears. Uh, they were in an actual room, uh, which was carefully constructed to be fairly dead and neutral. And, and as you're right, we uh, part of those systems were we had different environmental simulations. Basically, we could uh, alter the impression of the size of the room and the liveliness of the room based on different parameters you could select. Um, so, and that's, that's true because speakers interact with their environments, both physically and dynamically, you know, the locations as well as how um, the dynamics of the room are playing back with it, to ultimately get to the experience. Um, but you're still, you still have a human in the room. But when you introduce headphones, now you've bypassed part of the natural hearing system, right? You're putting the sound directly into the ears. It's not coming around the head and you're not getting both ears aren't hearing the left and both ears, ears hearing the right and uh, all those complications. So we had to uh, introduce part of that just to make the, the, um, the experience more real. So again, uh, can't say that it sounds exactly like a real room or your real room. Um, or it's going to sound exactly like it would in your ears, but we certainly have taken considerations uh, in that to make it sound more natural. And of course, that that works ongoing. So we we intend to continue to develop and evolve 
that with new features and new capabilities and it ultimately add to the realism uh, as this as time goes on. So uh, not only are you guys regularly profiling the sound of uh, the speakers that we carry and the headphones that we carry, uh, you're also updating and thinking of the ways to account for all of the challenges this stuff presents and how to how to take it even to the next level where it's not just how do these speakers sound, but how do they sound in different rooms and different cars and things like that? Does that sound right? That's right. In fact, those things are uh, ongoing in parallel. So we do try to keep our inventory uh, current. Um, we know that we're not there yet, but that is that is on a daily basis. Uh, we are continuing to to research speakers, uh, research as in characterize and and develop the simulations for them. But uh, to your other point, yes, we the technology and our methods are also ongoing, um, such that we do intend in the future to bring uh, the ability to tweak the environments to through the headphones uh, to get them closer to to your uh, listening environment. Um, um, do you hear from skeptics, people that say, ah, this this can't possibly work? And if so, what would you say to them? Of course. Uh, well, we know it's got its limitations. Um, we're working on them. Uh, and of course, it'll never be perfect for everyone, because if it gets more perfect for one person, it gets less perfect for someone else. So uh, the nature of the beast to appeal to a diverse uh, listening base and user base, it, we're gonna have to make some compromises, um, but we, we're still trying to make it realistic. I can vouch for how well it works. Uh, when I bought my truck a few years back, we have you know the virtual listening rooms at our, our retail store here in Charlottesville. And I thought, you know, this was pretty new at the time. Uh, and, you know, I've been around Crutchfield since 1996. Uh, my experience, uh, I was very used to going over and look, hey, look, there's a wall of speakers. Uh, and I got a switching box and I can switch A speaker, B speaker. And that's how we used to listen to our car speakers. We do the same thing for home speakers. And then it got replaced by this virtual room. And I like anybody, I was like, I wonder if that's actually going to work. Right. And will I be able to choose speakers I like based on this? So I went in and I sat down, I spent like an hour and a half going through a whole bunch of speakers. I told the system what car I have. And uh, I, I came to a very clear conclusion. I like these speakers the best. Uh, and so that's what I bought. And that's what I installed in my truck. Uh, that was kicker CS uh, and KS speakers for anybody that's at home that's wondering what I bought. Uh, and as a result, I've put kicker speakers in my next vehicle and I've been a fan ever since. And uh, I credit that to, I don't think I knew at the time how much I liked kicker speakers. And uh, so it, it worked really well. Um, so yeah, I've, uh, I, I, I have a testimonial for your speaker compare that I like to share. Um, another thing we do is uh, our current training, when we train new advisors, we actually use speaker compare because once again, we don't have a room full of speakers where they can go and listen to every speaker we sell, uh, but they can get on their computer at their home safely, working remotely and uh, put their headphones on and spend an hour or two comparing a bunch of speakers. So uh, this technology is benefiting the current advisors that we've got as well as customers directly. Right, which is cool. And, and that's another thing, um, you know, while it's never going to be an absolute replacement for being able to listen uh, or, you know, to replicate the experience you're going to get when you get your speakers in your house on box set up the way you want with your equipment. But that doesn't mean it's not useful. Right. So it, it brings a lot of benefits that you can't get even in a, in a brick and mortar uh, showroom. You know, that that has, first of all, brick and mortar showroom options are becoming less and less popular. So um, and then of course, you recently we've had the COVID concerns where they weren't even available. Um, but what we're doing, the ultimate usefulness of the tool uh, at the higher level, regardless of perfection would you know is that um anybody can log on line up speakers and at least decide which ones they think they might like versus which ones they don't like you know so they can narrow their choices um another cool thing uh, you mentioned in your last segment about the um the the efficiency of speakers and the loudness yep you know and you all had to basically dial in the volume so that people didn't naturally think that the louder one sounded better. 
Yep, we so, would have to do that live in the room. When we turn when we switched it to the speakers that were less efficient, we would turn the volume knob up and we had done some testing to know how far to turn it up so that they were right. about equal volume so that you could really just judge them for their tonal characteristics, not how efficient they are. Right, and you typically can't get that in in a brick and mortar listening environment, certainly not from a wall of sound somewhere. Yeah. Uh, so speaker compare has a cool feature where it's got an equal power mode which is captures the efficiency and the loud the more efficient ones will be louder but we also have a feature where we we can basically level level match i'll say uh with equal loudness mode where we've brought all of the loudness into uh about the same range so that you in a virtual way, we are already dialing those knobs for you. And the user has full control of which mode they want to listen in. Um, but it's it's something that you don't normally get to do when you're shopping for speakers. Uh, and it really makes it a much more natural comparison where the, the tonal characteristics of the speaker come out and aren't overpowered by the, uh, the efficiency loudness. And, you know, the efficiency of a speaker, a speaker... If you had five speakers and one of them is significantly more efficient than the other four, it might be easy to think as the listener, that person auditioning speakers, well, that one's clearly better because it's louder, but the other ones could be just as good if you turn the volume up. And so you want to eliminate that phenomenon and you have the ability to here in speaker compare. Yep. What speakers do you have at your house, Rick? I have clips, maybe 20 years old. They're part of the, um, I think the R, RP and RF series. Yeah. You and me are alike in that regard. I have clips all over my house as well. I'm a big fan. To be fair, though, you know, as we've gone through the research, we, we frequently have, have set up, you know, headphones versus reality tests, and we've used a variety of speakers. Um, I'm sort of a middle of the road guy. If I had to do it again, I would probably take something that was a little less horny, you know, the the, the, the bright Tractix uh, horns that Klipsch's are known for, uh, which some people love, but I think just something smooth in the middle. I've been very happy with, you know, Polk, B&W, Keps. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, those B&Ws, uh, we, we just got to hear them in that last segment, uh, and, right. you know, we had them set up here. Boy, they are uh, undeniably great sounding speakers, incredible detail, uh, and just nuanced, I mean, fantastic sound. So yeah, as a Klipsch fan, I can also appreciate speakers that are not going to uh, have that quite, you know, loud, proud, in your face, rock and roll sort of sound, something a little bit more refined and elegant uh, can, can really sound nice too. So very cool. Uh, Rick, I'm gonna show people a little bit about how to use speaker compare. Do you wanna hang here while I do that in case we get any sure. questions or anything? I'm, so I'm gonna kinda, minimize you you should still be able to see me but i won't be able to see you much uh because i'm going to show uh, what's on my browser here uh and if you're watching us on live you might be able to see what i'm doing but you might have a few seconds of delay so uh what i've got on my screen now is that landing page if you just searched for speaker compare on the website this is what you would see um, but i've also set it up so that uh, we can actually see what it looks like when you are comparing speakers so i went to our home audio section. I went to bookshelf speakers and uh, I'm looking at a bunch of speakers. Uh, now, Rick and the gang have not uh, profiled every single pair of speakers we sell. So we figured uh, we'd make it easy for you to find the ones that they have done. Uh, and there's actually a filter for that over on the left. So if you go over on the left and scroll down, there's a filter for virtual audio demo available. And if you select yes, you'll be looking at only speakers where we can play them for you using Speaker Compare. Uh, and once you select yes, uh, then you go through and select speakers right here uh, in this compare and listen box. You'll see I selected these already along with three other pair of speakers. And now that I've selected them, this box comes up at the bottom where I can click on compare sound and... <laughs> Wow, now we're listening to those speakers. Uh, what, what act, and I've already clicked on some of this stuff so we can get sort of right to the heart of the matter. When you do this, it will prompt you to select the headphones that you have. Uh, and if they are headphones where Rick and the gang have 
profiled them in our system so we know what your headphones sound like and those are the ones you're using with your computer uh, then we can you know sort of make the sound sound like the you you should be able to tell the difference between this Bowers and Wilkins and these Elacs and these JBLs and these Revel speakers uh, in this example so you choose your headphones and then you choose what music you want to listen to uh, and this is where I would love to hear more from Rick. Uh, we've got some selections of music, right? That's we've got, we own the rights to it. It's cop, you know, we own the, you know, we have the ability to play that uh, for yep. people. And there's also a select your own music option. So people can really just choose whatever song they have on their computer and speaker compare can actually make that work too. That's right. Uh, for a best variety of music formats we are aware of a couple that may not work um so if you run into that please let us know because we're always looking for examples to better understand the limitations uh but if your browser can play it then it should work with speaker compare awesome so we've got songs for you if you have uh, songs stored on your computer you can choose one of those uh, I'm just going to choose, uh, do you have, which one do you, you probably have listened to these like over and over again. Which one do you like? <laughs> uh, I can't really pick one out. A lot of times I do go to bright work, uh, bright but work. it really depends on what, what part of the, um, uh, this frequency spectrum I'm listening to. Sometimes I go yeah. down to the, um, the, the heavier metal stuff. Which is actually so, a know. band. Uh, several people in that band work here at Crutchfield, so that's right. how we got the rights to play that song. Yeah, uh, cool. Let's do that one. I'm gonna kind of show how it works. Uh, so I've got that song selected. I've told it which headphones. I actually chose these exact headphones I'm wearing now, some Audio Technica 40s, uh, and I've chosen a song, and I've got four speakers loaded up into the system. Uh, I can hit play, and then I can click on each speaker to hear the difference. I can tell it what volume I want it at. I'm gonna max it out for the purposes of making it sound good in this video. Uh, and then right here is that thing you were just talking about, that equal power, equal volume thing. Uh, yep, and so I've got, currently yep. I've got it selected as equal volume. So uh, if I select equal power, I'm gonna do that now. Not only will you hear the different tonal characteristics of each speaker, but you'll also hear the difference in efficiency. If one of these speakers is a lot louder than the others with the same amount of power, that will be accounted for in this, right? That's right. Um, so I'm gonna hit play and I'm gonna switch through these speakers. I do want you folks at home to know that uh, we are taking Rick's amazing technology and we are uh, compressing it and putting it into YouTube and Facebook and sending it to your computers. And you may or may not be listening with the same exact headphones I'm listening to. And uh, what you should hear when I select these different speakers is that there's a difference. Something is happening that is different when one speaker than the other. And that's the system working. Uh, if you want to hear the actual, you know, differences between these speakers through this program, you'll need to plug your headphones into the computer, go to our websites, do everything that I've done, and then you can actually hear it for real on your end. But if you hear anything different, you can know that the system is doing something. So I'm just going to breeze through that real quick and just so people can hear that at home. I think, uh, from, obviously, I'm hearing it in my headphones directly, so the difference was pretty remarkable to me. The difference in efficiency on a couple of these speakers was huge. The JBLs were by far the loudest of the four right here, which actually jives with what I know about JBLs, JBL speakers. They are generally very efficient. Those speakers, I'm pretty sure, have a horn-loaded tweeter in them, so that, that all makes sense. Uh, and probably you could hear that at home as well. Uh, and uh, if we chose equal volume, the difference wouldn't be as amazing uh, here in this medium uh, because, uh, because the volume, the difference in efficiency would be sort of taken away. Let me try to demo that real quick and see if you guys at home hear any difference uh, as I do the same thing and play the same song on the same speakers. But uh, now we've got it set up as equal volume.
So the differences should have been more subtle, but they were still there. I could certainly hear tonal differences. One was brighter than another one, things like that. Uh, and that's what Speaker Compare can do. And it can do it on bookshelf speakers, floor standing speakers, uh, home speakers, and car speakers. And uh, it does its thing uh, for a lot of different styles of speakers. So you can use this to pick out the speakers you want in your car, in your home. Uh, are there other types of speakers that are going to be, you know, down the road as you develop this added to the ability to do speaker compare? Absolutely. Um, yeah, we always have things in the works. So we've got more, um, we've got some marine speakers. Uh, and beyond that, we're going to get into some powered bookshelves and, and sound bars are, are on our roadmap. So we definitely have different things in store. That makes sense. Uh, sound bars are, you know, uh, a very popular and growing popular way to listen to sound, TVs without having to listen to the TV speakers. So it makes right. sense that we could uh, that we should be able to do this there as well. Um, okay. I'm going to just go to check in the comments real quick to see if we have anything speaker compare related. Uh, I think uh, I think you've done a really pretty nice job of establishing what it is, what it does, and why it's important. Um, let's see here. Can you recommend any product that can recreate reverb or vibe like the '90s car EQ and DSPs? Uh, I think they're taking advantage of having a sound guy in the room to be like, uh, what? Can, how can you do that? I don't know if we have the answer for him, Rick. I do not have the answer for you. <laughs> uh, if you're looking to recreate reverb and stuff, uh, that's uh, that might be something you can do with like a fancy car DSP, but generally people are not trying to do that. They're trying to recreate the music as it was originally intended and recorded by the artist uh, and without adding reverb. But some of these uh, DSPs can do a lot of powerful stuff. Uh, what else we got here? Ryan says, are Bluetooth speakers on speaker compare? Is that something you'd like to try to tackle uh, Bluetooth they, speakers? They are not yet. We are working on them, though. So I expect that uh, they will, they're all definitely on our roadmap, and I suspect that, that we'll have them supported in speaker compare in the future. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Scott on Facebook says, Rick's speakers rock. <laughs> so compliments on your clip speakers there, Rick. <laughs> Appreciate it, yeah. Very cool. Uh, is there anything I have left out, Rick? Is there anything we need to tell people that we haven't told them? Uh, I'm just leaving. The final thought really is um, one of the primary drivers for developing this was to empower the, our users to make their own decisions. You know, and and I think you know, our focus has been on developing a, a faithful tool. It is still a tool. Um, but rather than taking the approach of telling people what they should buy, right? We let them make their own decisions. And, you know, I think that speaks to Crutchfield as well. Yeah, so what's not factored into speaker compare is what speakers we want you to buy, what speakers we make more money on them if you buy. That's not even a thought in this whatsoever. It is all science and math based, right? There's, there's no bias. Uh, well, there's not any intended bias or <laughs> that we know of. Uh, in our profiling uh, methodologies. So, you know, it, everybody gets put on the same, you know, in the same test rig, same playing field, and then that's how things are um, are played back using uh, this platform. So, yeah, it really comes down to um, user decision. Awesome, Rick. I think, the, I think we've answered all the questions that have come in. I think we've done what we intended to do here today. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your day in your secret hideaway bunker where, uh, and, uh, and really appreciate you being here, Rick. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Have a great one. We'll see you later. Yeah. All right. So speaker compare, hopefully that was helpful for you guys at home. Hopefully you could hear some of the things we heard here. Uh, we are going to get into our last segment of today's broadcast. We're going to bring in Matt, Matt, come on in buddy. Uh, Matt, is it okay to say your last name, sure, Matt? Sure, it's in the book all the time. Matt Freeman, everybody. Hello, everybody. What do you do here at Crutchfield, Matt? We've talked to you before, but we remind have. everybody at home. So to remind everybody, I am uh, the editor for the car AV articles that we put in our catalog. So when Dave writes an article, you're the one that like spell checks it and stuff? Spell checks, yep. Uh, I'd largely tell him that he wrote everything correctly on the first try every time, I oh. promise. Yeah. That's so. the job of an editor, huh? That is, yeah. I didn't realize that. <laughs> it's a very easy job <clears throat> when you uh, have such good writers. Yeah. 
So you are here today to talk about Morel speakers. That is correct. Morel, Morel car, speakers. car speakers. Very cool line of speakers. Um, you know, I, I like to say that one of the, the cool things about um, working here at Crutchfield is uh, getting exposed to brands that fly under the radar a little bit, that aren't as well known as, as you know, the major players, um, but, but that do incredible work. Um, and Morel is one of those brands. Um, they produce some astonishingly good speakers, amongst other the, the other audio components. They They've been around yeah. quite a while. They started mm -hmm. off uh, somewhere uh, you know, within a few years of when Crutchfield actually became a thing. Right. right. Uh, I hadn't heard of them until just a few years ago when we started carrying them, though. So they are not mm -hmm. a household name. They're not, you know, uh, the most popular speakers on the planet just because they just don't have the name recognition. Exactly. And that's why we wanted to Though talk should, about them, yeah. actually, because <laughs> exactly. they're so good. They, they really are. Before we get deep into Morel, we put a poll question out earlier. Oh, very good. Uh, which was, uh, what speakers do you have in your car? And we had several choices of answers. Mm -hmm. uh, the most popular choice, there's actually two ties for first on Facebook. Do we have, the, is this all the results for YouTube and Facebook, or do we have two separate polls going on? Two separate polls. So on Facebook is all I got right now, right? Uh, we're going to, have, have we closed the YouTube poll yet? So we're going to close that soon. I'll have the YouTube numbers, and we'll compare Facebook to YouTube here. Uh, and uh, while we try to get some speakers on display for you. Uh, a four-way tie? No kidding. Everybody wins. So uh, Facebook had more opinions than YouTube. Uh, more, uh, more, uh, a clear, not a clear winner, almost. We had a two-way tie for first on Facebook. Uh, stock speakers with the base system, so the cheapest factory system sure, you might have. Sure and stock speakers with a premium system. Both of those came in with 33% of the vote, uh, more than any of the other two answers. So by far and away, mm -hmm. most of the people at home have factory speakers, whether they be the cheap ones or the right, slightly right. less cheap right. ones. Well, uh, well, we can fix this for you. Yeah, 7% uh, <laughs> said they have uh, budget-friendly aftermarket speakers. Okay, good. And 27% out said they have aftermarket speakers that are more premium than that. So well done. that warms the heart, doesn't it? Does. It? it does, it does. So good job, everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, those of you that have replaced your speakers uh, and those of you that have yet to replace your speakers. Right, right. Uh, cool. All right. So Morel. Yes. Um, Morel. And you, we've now have them on display. We do. We have a couple of their uh, coaxials on display. Uh, we have a. Well, I'm sorry. This is actually a, from a four-inch uh, component set, and this is our their six and a half uh, coaxial. Coax. And this is. Let me see here. Which one is this? Mm -hmm. That's the uh, Maximo. I do. That believe. is the Maximo, and this is the Tempo Ultra. Yep. Uh, yeah. Nice. Yep. Uh, they're. Uh, we just actually shot a video about these. Uh, still working That's on right. it. It'll be That's out right. on the site pretty soon. Probably a couple weeks, something like that. Yeah, excellent. Uh, because uh, because they look great and they, they solve some problems they and they some sound problems great. In a great way. They do. What are they doing differently than other companies? So, you know, if you look on their site, their their stated goal as a company is to produce sound that's as close to perfect as possible. Um, and you know, obviously, perfect sound, especially in the car environment, kind of a dream. But but they get as close as as you can probably get. Um, they are great about um, when, they, when they create a prototype for a speaker line that they're going to, to produce. They will actually assemble it by hand and then put it through lots of rigor. I think they do seven very rigorous tests. And they're not going to release a line of speakers for sale until they feel that it sounds exactly right, that they feel that it sounds the way it's supposed to. So, so they are very, very into testing, into making sure before they release anything that, that it's dialed in and, and where it needs to be before they release to the public. And they probably don't just have two people that listen to speakers. There's probably exactly. a lot of people going in and listening to these speakers exactly. to really... Exactly. Uh, which is a nice sort of real-world way mm -hmm. to do it. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and they, uh, they, most of their stuff is actually like hand-built, right? It is. It is. I mean, some they do assembly line stuff, but yeah, they, they hand assemble quite a lot of, of what they produce. And they build them That's at nice. their, they're actually, they're, they come to us from Israel. They do. And they hand build at their home factory in Israel. Yep, that's uh, correct. That's, that's where, where they do a lot of the stress testing and, and yeah, making it all, uh, make it all dialed in to sound nice. Yeah, that's where like most of their speakers are made. Uh, right. The uh, the least expensive stuff, probably not, but sure, sure. The, the most expensive stuff, and, a, and it trickles pretty far down the line, is a lot of them are hand built in Israel. It does, it does. And I gotta say, you know, my first exposure to the Morel brand, um, was listening to their um, Virtus Nano Carbon line. 
Um, and you can see those on our site. They actually, th this component set has a woofer that has a mounting depth of about 11 sixteenths of an inch. I mean, this thing is shallow. It looks like a Frisbee or a discus. Um, but they produce some astonishingly good uh, low end, really good bass response from a cone that's as, you know, that shallow. It's, it's pretty amazing. Um, not the most budget friendly speakers, um, you know, that, that kind of technology comes at a price. But the nice thing is, is that the sound, the, the audio principles that they apply to that line of speakers, you're right, does trickle down to, to some of their more, um, most of their more accessible. Yeah, speakers, I, I think such, we've got such them on, these two. Yeah. I think we've got them on the screen now. So these are you the do, Virtus, yeah. Virtus, is it Virtus? Virtus. Virtus. Sure. Got it. Uh, Virtus Nano, uh, this is a two-way component system with a pretty beastly crossover. It Looks like an alien. We love it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and what's not evident from this first picture is right. what you were talking about, how shallow they you are, right? You can see it at I'm the end of the pair. That's what I'm going to do. You, there. Very you good. saw where I was oh, headed. Oh, yeah. Uh, so this <laughs> gives you an idea of how it's very different from oh, yeah. most other car speakers. Yeah. Uh, most other car speakers, I mean, even most other speakers like this Morel, uh, have this big magnet on the back. I think they mm -hmm. can see it in the air. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, Where exactly. are we going? Where is <laughs> camera? Which camera? You're going to switch cameras? We're going right here. Yeah, exactly. It's coming here soon. Uh, <laughs> there we go. This is what the side of most speakers look like, mm -hmm. right, with a huge magnet, a big right. basket, and that's what holds the voice coil and uh, the bottom of the woofer cone. That's what allows, mm -hmm. it's the motor structure of the, exactly. of the speaker. Most speakers look like this. Mm -hmm. uh, these mm -hmm. Morel Virtus Nanos don't look like that. That is correct. Uh, but they sound astonishingly good. Um, and again, they, again, that shallow of a, of a woofer produces some really, really good bass response. So a lot of the technology they use in their upper end, higher end stuff sort of exactly. trickles it, down. It trickles down, and the attention to detail is still found in in some of the uh, the less expensive lines, like the uh, like the Tempo Ultras and the uh, the Maximo Ultras that that we're showing off here. Um, it's pretty great. So, really, the key for for these uh, these Tempos and these Maximos. Um, Morel, one of the things I really like about the Morel sound is, is the bass response, is, is the mid bass, is everything that comes from the woofer. Um, their tweeters are great, you know, they use soft dome tweeters, so they give, you know, it's a really nice, smooth, high end, really good detail, but it's, it's in the mid range where these things really, really shine. Um, and a key to the success of, of these two lines um, are the fact that they use treated paper for their woofer cones. That's, you don't see that much. You uh, don't, and it's easy to think of, oh, paper, that's what cheap factory, stereo, or cheap factory speakers are made of. And while that's mostly true, paper itself is actually not a bad woofer material. Um, it can tend to be pretty acoustically neutral, um, and it's much more lightweight than, say, polypropylene or, or some of the more petroleum-based ones. Um, so it reacts more nimbly to the signal that's being fed. So if you feed a, a paper cone a really clean, good signal with some good power behind it, it's going to sound really good. Lightweight, rigid, able to move in and out exactly. uh, without warping and all that stuff. Right, and exactly. The, a paper is a warm sounding material when it, it makes sound. It is, and, and it's their goal, again, when, when they talk about the kind of sound that they're going after, they, they're, they're going after sound that they want as close to live as possible. You know, they're going of, for the realism. They're one of the reasons the that many companies use plastic and poly and uh, aluminum and mm -hmm. uh, all these other materials is, is for the durability of the, you know, how long sure. you're going to live yeah, in a exactly. car environment. Uh, and so Morel, do it, they, treat, they treat the paper. They do right? treat the paper. And actually, if you feel the cones, if you buy them and you feel the cones, they do feel a lot like polypropylene or a lot like you know the, the, the synthetic cones that... that uh, you will find in other speakers. So they are they are rugged. Um, you know, there's definitely some some good strength to them. So they're going to last, which is nice. Uh, and uh, you can really pump these full of power. You can. That's the other thing about Morel that I like. They because they have paper cones. Um, a lot of them can be very efficient. Um, I think the 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 Morel and Tempo lines. Most of them run somewhere between 89 and 91 dB for efficiency, and that's pretty good. Um, these are, these are going to sound really good if you play them off of an aftermarket uh, stereo, for example. Maybe not so much a factory stereo, but certainly your higher-powered aftermarket stereos, these are going to sound good. They're going to sound great. They're going to sound the way they are absolutely intended if you feed them power. 
Um, and the these coaxes, I believe, the six and a halfs will handle up to 100 watts RMS. Yeah, I think, I think that's correct. And there's there's a six by nine component set in the uh, Tempo Ultra line that will handle up to 150 watts, and that's just that's a huge amount of power. So. They are going to, you know, that kind of power handling is going to give you tons of great detail, tons of volume, obviously, um, but it's it's what helps with the uh, the bass reproduction because it's going to enable that co the, the cone excursion, you know, to, to reach you know its its max depth and really push out some 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 good bass notes. Hey, do we have any of the Tempo Ultras over there that you guys can bring? A Tempo Ultra coax where I can show the difference on the oh, tweeter. Right. Right, right, yeah, that's right. a Tempo that's Ultra. The, uh, that's the uh, component. The component woofer. Yep. If you don't, I can just pull it up on the website here. I just mm -hmm. wanted to show the difference because they're doing something pretty cool with the Tempo coax speakers. Uh, with I think the those tweeter. are all components. Yeah, these are all. Oh, wait. It's, nah, no, that it is. is a coax. There right? it is. That's right. Yep. Uh, so, Zach, uh, or, yeah, if you want to zoom in on this one, this is uh, the, the Tempo. This is another example of what they're doing. This to the... To even the initiated, this looks like it's a component speaker. It does. That looks uh, like a dust cap in the middle. It does look like a dust cap, but this is actually a two-way coaxial speaker. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, what's going on is they have integrated the tweeter sort of down into and closer to the motor structure of mm -hmm. the vehicle, of, right. the, of the speaker, which, which means... What you don't have is tweeters sticking up and sticking out and adding to the mounting height of the speakers. This correct. is another thing that they've done uh, to make it fit more cars That's and correct. and you get a sort of a single point source of sound so that right. the woofer and the tweeter are sort of coming from the exact same spot so they'll never be out of phase. Exactly. And 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 the, the note dispersion is going to be fantastic. Yep. So you're going to get a much bigger sweet spot you know, regardless of where you're sitting in the car. So that helps too. So yeah, very impressive stuff. Yeah, I love them. Uh, I really do. Uh, that's why we're here talking about them. They're, <laughs> exactly. They're a, they're a brand exactly. You, you may not have heard of them. You, if you're shopping for new speakers for your car, mm -hmm. uh, you should check them out. Uh, you give, should give give them a fair shake, even though you've never heard of them. Uh, now you have. Uh, and and you I you know as you're looking at them, you'll notice that the customers who have bought them, we get a lot of five star reviews mm -hmm. of them. They are absolutely blown away. And to refer back to our previous segment, the nice thing is. Quite a few of these morels are available for virtual uh, listening through our speaker compare tool. So that you can, so actually, you can actually grab headphones yeah. and try them out right now if you'd like. Well, after we're done talking anyway. Yeah, right? wait till we're, wait till the show's <laughs> over, please. Uh, no, I take that back. If you're going to go buy something, go do that yeah, right now. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, that's more important than this. <laughs> cool. Uh, thank you, Matt. Anything else we need to talk about before? I mean. We're we're just about done, by the way. We are just about done. No, um, that's that's really all I've got about uh, Morel. Other than yeah, you're right. Um, give them a shot. Um, even if you if this is the first time you've ever heard of them, um, we can vouch for just how great they really are. Yep, Dave Rock. I've had mine for seven years now. That's right. Yeah, Dave, who was on just a little bit earlier, seven years in his car and loves them to death. And he powers them with a uh, Morel amplifier, yep. um, which is a great amplifier. So. And Morel makes a lot of a lot of other products that we don't carry everything that they make. That's uh, but uh, the the more we find out if our customers are digging them, the more Morel yep. products we might get. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they've got some really cool, innovative stuff that you just mm -hmm. don't see from most other companies. These are great. You'll likely love them. And that's the Morel of the story. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to allow you back on the show. I understand. <laughs> that was well played. Well played. <laughs> Uh, so, I had to, since you're here, and mm -hmm. I had to grow this beard because I, I'm always so impressed right. with your beard. Uh, well, people, you. people may be noticing that my beard is getting a little unruly. Uh, and uh, since we're wrapping this thing up and we're just kind of hanging out now anyway, I figured I, I would uh, talk about why my beard is so awesome. Uh, it's impressive. It, thanks. I've been growing it out. <laughs> uh, I recently auditioned for a role in a musical, and the character has a crazy beard. At crazier than this, and so I thought I need to grow this. Yeah, thing out. sure. So this Worth is just going to keep on as you keep <laughs> watching the live. The beard is going to get thicker and bushier all the way up until it's time for performance, where we're probably going to trim it in some crazy way. And so maybe we'll get to do a live when the beard oh, just looks totally wacky. 
I'm all for it. I'm looking forward to that. That will be great. Uh, it's gonna be, so we have to have you on there okay. on that episode as well. Uh, on behalf of everybody behind the scenes, we have had a fantastic time today yeah. talking to you about Morel speakers, our speaker compare technology, these bookshelf speakers back here, the demo days with Dave. Uh, thank you to all the folks behind the scenes playing the videos and the cameras and mm -hmm. the comments. Uh, thank you everybody that has been at home and watching and commenting. You make this a whole lot more fun to do. Uh, I am JR on behalf of everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here in two weeks. Yeah, yeah. It's nine o'clock in the morning, dear. Been up for hours, it seems. Just about my time to go. Head on back to reality. Yes, it's time. Oh